taking me Every time I touch that track It turns into gold Everybody knows I've got the magic in me Welcome back. Today we're going to be starting the geometry unit. We're going to be starting the geometry unit by talking about translating, reflection, and dilation. So let's go ahead and get started with that right now. So before we get started, we have a few reminders. The figure before the transformation is called the pre-image. We label the pre-image with letters, so for example, triangle ABC. After we apply the transformation, we use the symbol that kind of looks like an apostrophe. It's just going to be a dash that's straight up and down. So when we read this symbol, we call this symbol prime. So for example, if you had a triangle, you had a triangle A prime, B prime, C prime. Now let's take a look at example A. Here we are at example A, and it says the pre-image of PQR is shown on the coordinate plane. Draw a translation, write three units, and down four units. Label the image P prime, Q prime, R prime. So we're going to be doing translation here, or another word for that is slide. So we're going to be going right three units and then down four. The easiest way to do this when we have the image already with us is we're going to just count on the graph. So we're going to go right three, down four. So starting with P, we're going to go over to the right, one, two, three, and down four, one, two, three, four, and our point is going to be right there. We're going to label it P prime. We're going to do the same thing for R now. We're going to go right, one, two, three, down, one, two, three, four, and label it R prime. And then we're going to finally go with Q and go one, two, three, down, one, two, three, four, and label that Q prime. Once we've done that, we'll just connect our points and we'll have given ourselves a triangle. You can use a straight edge for this, or you can freehand it if you feel as though you're good enough. And you notice that our triangle looks exactly the same as the triangle we had before. It's just slid down a little bit. Now we need to see what is another way to write three units to the right. Another way to write three units to the right is we're going to be adding three. If we're going to the right, we're going to be heading towards the positive numbers on our graph. So that's the same as adding three. The same thing with down four units. Instead, we're going to be going towards the negatives on our graph. So that's going to be minus four. So anytime that we have a slide and we're talking about positive, we're going to be going to the right. Negative would be to the left. Up would be going positive. Down would be going negative. Now let's take a look at example B. So here we are at example B and it says parallelogram ABCD has the vertices and they've listed them below. Translate the parallelogram to the right three units, down two units to yield the parallelogram A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. It wants us to list the coordinates and show it on the coordinate plane. So this time we don't have our image right on our graph or our pre-image right on our graph. So we're going to have to use the math in order to get this correct. So we talked about any time that we're going to be talking right, we're going to be adding, left would be negative, up would be positive, down would be negative. So now let's take a look at letter A at negative 5, 3. We're going to be going to the right three units, so that's going to be adding 3. And we're going to be going down two units, so it's going to be minus 2. Negative 5 plus 3 is going to be negative 2. 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. Now we're going to go with B prime. Again, we're going to be adding 3 and subtracting 2. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 3 minus 2 is going to be 1. C prime, again, same thing. We're going to be adding 3 and subtracting 2. Negative 3 plus 3 is going to be 0. 0 minus 2 is going to be negative 2. And our final point on our graph, we're going to be adding 3 and negative 2 to, is D. Negative 7 plus 3 is going to be negative 4. And 0 minus 2 is going to be negative 2. Now that we've got all our points, we're just going to plot them onto our graph. And once we've done that, we'll connect all of our points to make the parallelogram. So we've got negative 2, 1. So we're going to go over to negative 2, up to 1. And we're going to label that A prime. Do not forget your labels. They are very important. We're going to go over 2. And then we're going to go up 1 for point B prime. We're going to go 0. So stay right where we are. Go down negative 2 for C prime. And we're going to go negative 4. And we're going to go down negative 2 to give us D prime. Once we've done that, we're going to connect our points to give ourselves our parallelogram here. Not the best looking parallelogram in the world, but it gets the job done. And we've done this problem correct. Now let's move on to example C. Here we are at example C and it says show a reflection of triangle ABC over the Y axis. Label the image A prime, B prime, C prime. So we're going to be performing a reflection now, or another way to think of that is flip. 
and we're going to be going over the y-axis. So it's very important that since I know I'm going over the y-axis, I'm going to draw a dashed line down the y-axis so that I remember that's the one I'm going over. You don't have to do that, but it's an excellent tool to help you remind. So now we're going to go reflecting from one side to the other. And when we have an image that we is already on the graph, it's easiest to count. So again, I've got A here, and A is at 1, 2, 3, or five spaces to the left. So to reflect it over the five over the y-axis, I'm going to go five spaces to the right. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'm going to end up with a prime. I'm going to do the same thing with b now. It's going two places to the left, so I'm going to go two places to the right and call that b prime. And I'm going to go c prime. I'm going to go seven spaces to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Make that nine spaces to the left, which is why it's important to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine spaces to the right, and we've got C prime. Now we're going to connect all our points to make our triangle. And again, we should have the same size and shape triangle that we had on the other side. It should just look opposite as though it had been shown in a mirror. And that's what we have here. Remember that any time that you do a reflection, your shapes are going to be congruent. They're going to be exactly the same shape, exactly the same size. Same thing with translating. Same shape, same size. They are going to be congruent. And we've done this problem correct. Now let's move on to example D. So here in example D, it says parallelogram ABCD has the vertices listed below. Reflect the parallelogram over the horizontal axis and one of the coordinates for A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime, and show that uh, shape on the graph. So the first thing we need to do is figure out which axis we're going to be going over. With the horizontal axis listed here, we know that that's the x-axis, so we're going to draw a little dashed line over here over the x-axis, so we know that's the one that we're going to be going over. And then we don't have our shape here, so there's two ways that we could do this. We could draw our original shape and then reflect it over by counting, or we could understand the math that's involved when it comes to a reflection. So if I'm going over an x-axis, so I have something at the top, I know that it's now going to be going at the bottom. So I'm going to be changing the y value to the opposite of what it was. So for the first letter there, I have a is at negative 5, 3. The opposite of that for going over the x-axis would be negative 5, negative 3. For b, the x is going to stay the same, negative 1, but the y is going to be opposite, negative 3. For c, negative 3 is going to stay the same. The opposite of 0 is 0. There is no such thing as negative 0. Please don't write that. Same thing with D. Negative 7 is going to stay the same. There is no opposite to 0, so we're not going to write negative 0. We're just going to leave it at 0. So those are our points there. We're going to fill them in down at the bottom. Negative 5, negative 3. B is going to be at negative 1, negative 3. C is going to be at negative 3, 0. And our last point is going to be at negative 7, 0. So notice that the things that changed were the x's, they became the opposite of what they originally were. If I was going over the y-axis, the thing that would change would be the x value. So basically you change the opposite of whatever you're going over. Now that we have our points, let's go ahead and throw those on our graph. So we're going to go to negative 5, negative 3. So to the left 5, then down 3. We're going to do that for a prime. Label it right there. Don't forget your labels. Extremely important. Negative 1, negative 3 for our next point. We're going to call that b prime. Our next point is at negative 3, 0, so we're not going to go up and down. We're just going to go to the left. And then negative 7, 0, again, we're not going to go up and down. We're just going to go to the left. Once we've got all our points, we're going to make sure that we put in our labels and then connect all our lines to make a parallelogram. Again, not a super great looking parallelogram, but it gets the job done. And we've got this one correct. And on to the next. So here we are at example E, and it says... ABC is being dilated by a scale factor of 3. Draw the image A prime, B prime, C prime. So when we're talking about dilation, we're also talking about scale. So the way that we're going to scale something is we're going to be multiplying by our scale factor. So in this case, our scale factor is 3. So that's what we're going to be multiplying all the coordinates by. But oh no, it doesn't look like they gave us our coordinates. We're going to have to pick them up their graph ourselves. So let's look at where A is. So A is over to the right 3. It's not going up or down. So our point there is 3, 0. Looking at B, we've got our point at positive 1, negative 3. And we've got C, we're going to go to the left, negative 2, up 2. So positive, no, negative 2, positive 2. There we go. Remember, the x coordinate always comes first. Now, since we're going to be multiplying each of these by a scale factor of 3, we're going to be multiplying both things on the inside. So multiplying 3, multiplying 0. It's basically the distributive property for everything that we're doing here. 
Excellent, excellent, excellent. Make sure that we've got our distributive property happening for everything. Three times three is nine. Three times zero is zero, so that one's taken care of. Three times one is three. Negative three times three is negative nine. Negative two times three is negative six. Three times two is positive six, and we've got all our points. So let's go ahead and throw those on our graph. We're going over to nine and up zero, so that's gonna be all the way over here as A prime. We're gonna go over three and down negative nine for point B prime. And we're gonna go negative six and up positive six for C prime. Now we're gonna connect up our points to make our large triangle. Again, if you need a ruler, feel free to grab one. You wanna make sure that you get your points lined up correctly, can't always freehand it. And there we've got our triangle that is three times bigger than the triangle that we currently have. So when you're talking about dilation, we have figures that are similar, not congruent. They are the same shape, but they are not the same size. That's a very important thing to remember. Now let's take a look at the last example. Here we are at example F and it says quadrilateral ABCD has the vertices listed below. The quadrilateral is being dilated by a scale factor of one fourth, so that's our important thing. That's what we're gonna be multiplying by a fraction. What is the coordinates of the image? A prime, B prime, C prime, D prime. Show that image on the graph. Let's get started. So we're gonna be multiplying by a fraction, which is the same thing as dividing by the denominator. So whichever thing you wanna do is fine with me. I'm gonna keep with the multiplication theme. So in this case, I'm gonna be multiplying both numbers by one fourth, or you can burn that to a decimal as 0.25. Either way is fine with me, but remember we're gonna take both numbers there, so both the y coordinate and the x coordinate by 0.25. So negative eight times 0.25 is gonna be negative two. Four times 0.25 is gonna be one, and we're moving on to B. Again, same thing, 0.25 to both numbers on the inside. 0.25 times four is gonna be one. Eight times 0.25 is going to be two. And we're on to letter C, where we're gonna be multiplying by 0.25 again. Eight times 0.25 is gonna give me two. Zero times 0.25 is gonna be zero, so that stays the same. And the last we're gonna be multiplying by 0.25 to both those negatives there. Negative four times 0.25 is gonna be negative one. Positive times a negative, same thing is gonna be negative one. Now that we've got all those points, let's go ahead and put them on our graph. So we're gonna be going over to negative two, up positive one, we're gonna call that A prime. B, we're gonna be going over one, up two, we're gonna be calling that B prime. We're gonna be going to two, zero, so over two, nowhere for C prime. And we're gonna be going over one to the left, down one for D prime. And we've got ourselves another little parallelogram. So again, we're gonna be connecting all our points to make sure that we've got it correct. That brings us to the end of this problem. It also brings us to the end of this set of notes. If you like this video, go ahead and throw us a thumbs up. If you love this video, go ahead and throw us a sub, and we will catch you in the next one.